What is happening? My name is Nick Pollock. Welcome to another pitcher video breakdown. Today we are going to talk about Chris Paddock. What is he doing well? How did he just get three innings of 100 runs against the Giants? And is he back from 2019? So we're going to jump into this. Uh, if you don't know Chris Paddock, what he does is he throws fastballs, normally around 94, 95 miles per hour. Back in the day in 2019, those were well commanded a lot up and in to right-handers, up and into lefty. So essentially staying in the upper third of the zone. And he pairs that with a Vulcan changeup uh, that has a lot of depth to it, which he often tries to go down with. And then he has a curveball that he sometimes throws to try and get strikes, called strikes essentially. Not really a major third pitch. It's really fastball heavy with that complimentary change up and essentially the problems this year have been with that fastball he hasn't been commanding it well it's been more hittable than we'd like to see uh, so I'm going to be looking at this inning this is the third inning against the Giants on Sunday hopefully Chris Paddock is doing some things that we like to see a little bit more consistent with that fastball so let's jump straight into it let's watch this start and it uh, looks like right away he's going to be going with a fastball that's a nice one 94 up that's generally what Paddock likes to do I don't like to see that he's starting away. Generally, good paddock is one that's like aggressively inside, up, and in, confident that the bat is going to go underneath the fastball as it has a good rise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as he gets that one, 94, up and away. Okay, that's a first pitch strike. Lovely. I imagine he's going to attack again with a heater still going up. He tries to get the curveball in there, 81. It's not really paddock's bread and butter. Uh, kind of weird to see him throw that at 01. Uh, easy take. I think, you know, he wasn't looking for that whatsoever. Now at 1-1, I would love to see him go inside up and in. We'll see what happens here. Tries to throw another fastball, tugs it a little bit, but that's at 95, and I do actually kind of like, uh, the mechanics right now for Paddock. Um, as you can see, he goes down to the back left and put, back leg and pushes out. And he does look very centralized, very straight. And that does mean just a slight adjustment. You can see actually on release that he's kind of tugging a little bit. Toward I uh, toward the batter's opposite batter's box, but I think this is actually something he can adjust pretty easily. I uh, so I think that this is completely fine. Let's see him probably throw the fastball again. He nails it. Oh, just a little bit too high up. Okay, all right, that's fine. He just got a little bit underneath it. Our uh, first timing. Oh, cool. Now we're behind the plate and I can't see a thing. That's probably just a pump fastball right down the middle. <laughs> Why do they do that camera angle? I don't know. All right, so at three two now. Um, they've been going away for the most part. I assume the other one was kind of just middle-middle, and he took it at 3-1. It looks like they're about to go inside, which I absolutely love. I feel like Paddock at his best is when he's going in the inside corner. And he tugs that one away. It is at 96, which I do like. And that, is, honestly, this is a situation where Chris Paddock is thinking, okay, they can't hit my fastball. What am I doing? Like, if I throw this over the plate... Like, I didn't put it where I wanted to. It didn't matter, right? It, it didn't matter that I wasn't precise with my command. If I throw my four-seamer over the plate, they can't hit it. That was 3-2. That should make me feel pretty good if I'm Paddock uh, moving forward. So, you have a lefty now. Generally, the thought process is you throw change-ups away. So, change-ups away, then you go back up and in with a fastball. So, now, see they're setting away. And look at that. They establish a fastball. I want, I want to showcase this. This is a 95-mile-per-hour fastball away. Generally, when you see that, down and away too, it does open up the down and away corner off the plate for a uh, breaking pitch or a, or a secondary pitch, I really should say, for that change of fading away. I don't know if Paddock is feeling that right now, but that's what I would like to do. Uh, and then, then you can essentially throw that fastball up and in. You can stay away. You're generally, generally trying to avoid down and in and maybe up and away at this point. Strike. So we'll see if uh, Paddock, how he continues this sequence against Mike Talkman. And he goes with a curveball. I don't really like the curveball play here. Maybe he wasn't feeling the changeup and he felt like he needed some secondary pitch. But the curveball, especially one that from Paddock that he doesn't command too well, um, that could land kind of in the middle of the zone. Uh, and easily be swatted for a hit. Uh, I don't really like that pitch call. And it kind of means that he's going to go fastball again here um, at 1-1. And he does. He misses it too high up. Uh, this is interesting to me. It looks like their approach is they are trying to actually keep Paddock down. And naturally, Paddock likes to go up. So it kind could be one of those things from Jake Odorizzi that I saw uh, in 2019. Where Odorizzi's catcher would always, essentially Mitch Garver would have his glove down, but Odorizzi, if you know Jake Odorizzi, would throw fastballs up. 
So essentially the ball would naturally carry up to exactly where he wants to be in the upper third of the zone. That could be the case here with Paddock where they found that he was too high up often. So to kind of neutralize that, he starts his target lower and then it naturally goes up. Uh, but it isn't quite as precise as you want it to be. Uh, so 2-1. Let's see if they're just going to throw another fastball here. Change up. And that's fascinating. Okay, so so this change up is supposed to be down and away, right? We're talking about you hit this fastball here so you can play off this way. Comes out, and this is not where you want it to be. Uh, his release point, not great. He's not. He didn't drive to this point. You can kind kind of see that he's releasing it. This is this is how it comes out of his hand. It's getting a little bit tugged to the left. His, his weight is a little bit more to the left than you want. You want him a little bit more straight toward that outside corner. He pulls it. Talkman stays in on it. Good on him, by the way. Uh, maybe he was expecting secondary stuff in some way. Kept his weight back. Was able to actually push that one to left field, and he earned that base hit. So now with the man on first, I imagine you got to go with fastball. That's like the thing. He goes with the changeup, and that's I know it doesn't look like a good one. Because this, oh man, that's really close to the center of the plate. But that actually is a solid pitch. A first pitch changeup there that he wasn't looking for. Uh, now kind of changes the tone of the entire at bat. Right? So now he can throw a fastball in the same spot. The, the velocity gap is there. So it makes him a little bit more off balance for the next possible heater he could throw. So I imagine, I mean, Paddock also made that adjustment that you wanted to see, right? It wasn't a good changeup before against Talkman. Now here against Yastrzemski. It's a better one, so now it establishes for Paddock that he can throw that changeup later in this at-bat with a little bit more confidence. It looks like they're going to be setting up fastball inside, which I absolutely love now, uh, considering that the changeup before, it landed over here, but it started over here, and now you can keep that straight and keep Yastrzemski off balance. Let's see if he executes it. Not terrible. Not the worst miss. You're keeping his eye level up. Uh, changing the speeds, making him off balance. He's not giving enough information as the batter. Uh, he kind of wanted a swing, but he held back. And a high not a ton of information there. I uh, I would see if I can execute that changeup again. Change it up. Fastball away. Push the left field, and it's off the wall. So this is this is why I uh, in general. They were trying to go uh, up and in on the previous pitch. They're trying to stay down in this. What happens if you throw it up and away is, as you can see from Yaz here, and I'll pause it, you can get the barrel out much easier if it's up and away. If it's down, that's a farther farther bat travel. It's, it's harder to get down and away this. This is you can just kind of throw the bat out. He was late on it, and you just pushed it the other way. It's a good piece of hitting. Man, if he didn't stumble there, he probably has a double, too. So now at, at first and third, uh, you got to keep going with your fastball. And I love that they're going inside, finally. This is actually what classic Paddock was. Not not where you want. You want it up and in. Uh, and I'll be honest, so far here, I am not as impressed with Paddock as I thought I would be. Um, fastball velocity is up. And generally, he is going high in the zone, but it's, he's not having the precision that we normally see uh, from Chris Paddock. He goes with a changeup, gets the call. That was never a strike. That started away and never came back fully. Um, interesting also to see uh, a, a changeup call here. Yes, you are trying to change speeds and stuff, but generally, this would call for a breaking ball. You don't really see Paddock too often do the righty and righty changeup down and in. And he's just not feeling it. He's not comfortable um, in this at-bat. Uh, but, hey, you execute that one. Now you go back up and in. Absolutely. You establish a change of away. Different velocity. Now you're changing, uh, yeah. you're changing speeds. You're changing location. Execute this. This is where we want this pitch to go. Ah, he can't hit it. Come on, Paddock. Get it together. We want to see it. We want to see you execute. So, see is he going to go back in and out, in and out? Um, I honestly would try and execute this pitch again, personally, because I, I need to get that pitch. Maybe it's a fastball away. Wow, 97, though. So that's the thing. Okay, so because it was a changeup before, he said, I can throw a fastball out there. And that's the thing, though. If Paddock is at a place with that heater, that if he's able to get it in the zone like this, he should have success. Yes, it didn't work against Yaz. Uh, 
But that's, ooh, that's 97 up and away. That's really nice. Go back up and in. Nail this pitch. Got him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, you don't see that swing. I, but, but maybe Posey was looking for, for something else there. Um, and he, and Paddock just overwhelmed him on it. it like maybe it's enough rise that locating it here looks like it could be that one. I, uh, not amazing, not terrible. It's kind of, I don't know if he got away with one or not. That's all. The hands. Got to chase. Out of the strike zone up. Uh, all right. Let's see now. Now we have Brandon Belt. We have a lefty up. Uh, this could be what well, we've seen this inning is fastballs down and away as opposed to up and in. I want to see Paddock nail this quadrant. That's that's the old time Paddock. That's where he has success. Let's we'll see what happens. So he is up, and once again, I mean, he's beating guys up in the zone. This is a different pitch than away, and I do want to emphasize that. For a guy like Estremsky, who I think is a very good hitter, He's able to adapt um, and take advantage of an outside pitch that he can push the left field. Like he goes off the field effectively. So in some ways, you could make an argument that closer inside, uh, as you have to get your bat head out quicker to hit more inside pitches, that the fastball away actually was worse than the fastball middle. Uh, it went up and elevated. Belt was not ready for that one. He just got overpowered there. And if I'm Paddock, I'm not giving him a change. If I'm going at him again at 97, you got to feel good with that heater right now. You just struck out Posey with a two. So he did. He got him 97. Belt maybe was looking for a changeup. But now he's in the, the hole 2 I just go up again. Make him beat it. I like that call. He's probably now thinking secondary pitch down. Throw another fastball. Don't get cute. Oh, no, 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 no. No, okay. Execute it then. Yeah, 97 right down the middle. Couldn't handle it, right? There is a philosophy. It's called, I will only change. I mean, there's something. I'm sure there's a better way of saying it. But essentially, don't change your approach until the batter gives you a reason to change your approach. Uh, Bill in that at bat did not give a reason to change his approach. It was fastball, 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 fastball. Did not once showcase that he could get beat on it. Uh, so Paddock, even though it's right down the middle, that, that fastball is performing better than it was before. So when it comes to the story of Chris Paddock, the reason why he had that 2019 that was so successful was he had a fastball that was hard to hit and he was commanding it as, as good as anyone. Early in the season, Paddock didn't have either of those. The fastball wasn't where it wanted to be and the heater was not going 96-97 um, and beating guys like this. So we have the second down. We have the fastball acting as it should, but Paddock's command isn't quite there yet. Hopefully later this season he can get there. But until then, that's going to do it for today's breakdown. So as always, may your babips be low and your strikeouts high.